Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Microsoft Flight Sim where I'm going to try out the newly released Dornier DOX which is local legend number 12. Uh, it is available at the marketplace normally for $15 before Deluxe and Premium Edition peoples. It is $10 and actually when they released the DOJ I had sort of wondered why they didn't have the DOX instead because the DOX is so much more obnoxious. Well, no, it's, it's huge and it's uh, sort of more legendary than the DOJ per se, but the DOJ was sort of nice uh, and I've flown it, but we are going to try out the DOX. I have not tried it out yet and we are going to see whether in particular I can actually take off with it from this list seaplane school, which is the closest water runway I have been able to find to Germany, actually. Um, we have a lot of seaplanes now. They have given us a lot of seaplanes, but we don't have is so many water runways. We have a few. I've only got the water runways on, uh, but most of the dots here are actually people flying. Uh, as far as water runways go, there aren't that many. In fact, we might have more seaplanes, uh, European seaplanes, than European water runways. I haven't checked the rest of the world. I mean, we've got the Lata Lateco Air Airport there, which I flew the Lateco Air uh, 631 from and the Genoa water runway is particularly prominent uh, so there's those uh, so those are nice and there is the Orbitello one uh, down here somewhere but yeah there's not that many and it makes running these seaplanes inconvenient because you know I, maybe I could tour around Europe you know around the coast of Europe in these seaplanes but there aren't actually enough of these seaports uh, for us to stop at unless I'm going to be doing extremely long flights because they don't go very fast. So I wish they would do something about that and add some runways, water runways for us to start at because we can't start in the water randomly. It'll start us in flight and of course you can then land or splash down and then start the flight after doing that but that's not as nice. So anyway, with all these seaplanes that we keep getting, it'd be nice to actually be able to start them in various locations around Europe. And oh, by the way, it'd be nice to have some scenery, uh, scenery out of Europe. I mean, I'm still waiting for something from Asia, South America, Africa would be wonderful. And it's been since World Update 1 with Japan, which is the smallest world update. And by the way, Japan has full photogrammetry available. I'm a world traveler. I would like to go places. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, there's only one livery for this plane. It is a very heavy plane uh, as far as they go. In its time, the largest uh, flying boat. And of course, it was exceeded by various other planes, but it is magnificent in its own way. And we will try to fly it out of the seaplane school, which doesn't have a very long waterway. Let's find out if I can get off the water. Okay, here we go. So this is the cockpit. Interesting style. It's not quite as glorious as the later Lateco Air uh, 631, but it's nice. I better take off before I smack into the land on the opposite side, huh? Well, it's got a pretty good acceleration in the water here, actually. I don't think there's going to be a problem. Come on. Okay, finally. Wow. All sorts of interesting details. The little rudder there. And uh, some of these secondary wings on top of the wing attached to the aileron. I guess those are like trim. But yeah, it's a very interesting plane because of the 12 engines mounted on top of the wing. And if we had engine failures, it might be super interesting. <laughs> it doesn't go particularly fast. Let's see about the various keys. Well, here we have switches. Cargo hatch, passenger doors, landing lights, and there's a chronometer there. Okay, a control 3 has this view of this same sort of navigator's location. Control 4 has this panel. 
And the chat is generators. And lights. I'm not too sure what Buggle is. But auxiliary generators. On is down, which is interesting. And there's the engine panel. I don't think those at the top are going to change at all. In fact, uh, these, considering they're reading the temperature really, really low, probably aren't super functional. I don't think it'd be that cold. Clutch throttle. Ignition timing adjustment. Nebulizer. Engine start selection. So that's five, six, seven, eight gets us to motors 7 through 12 and then 9 gets us back here but okay all right now well, let's go back in front can we okay we seem to be turning fairly wildly we are here it's not as hefty as it could feel it's not that bad That's about as fast as I can turn it. I like this sort of metallic texture. Not too shiny, but... giving a very definite metallic feel to it. The cockpit doesn't have quite the view as some of the other seaplanes, but it's obviously accurate and lovingly done with all the details. Oh, here's the internal view of the cabin. Uh, control Shift 3 got me this. Um, I can't turn my head here though. Control Shift 4, Control Shift 5, Control Shift 6, 7, 8. But yeah, I can't, I can't turn my head in those views. This is a nice view actually. But probably would have used the drone camera for it if I had that set up. Nine, and so those are the control shifts. Well, if they're intent on doing a whole bunch of flying boats, uh, might I suggest the PBY Catalina just because it has a wheel option. And then we can transition from flying boats to... I mean, of course, the Grumman Goose has the same. But uh, yeah, the Catalina... Just has a nice feel to it. The engine sound doesn't really sort of inspire me at all. It's feels sort of basic. Well, just cruising right along here. Uh, we're holding at about 115 knots indicated. So far I'm pretty satisfied by how it moves. It does have sort of a little bit of a wobble. Uh, which is a good wobble, not a bad wobble. Well, at least when I throttle down, the bottom one seems to move. That's an interesting sound. I just moved the mixture. Okay, when I put the mixture uh, full up, full rich, it doesn't make a sound. But then when I pull it down, it makes some sounds. That's more interesting than I was expecting. <laughs> I'm not too sure what it's doing. Making some sound. I don't know what it's related to. I think if I could read that dial, that'd be the outside air temperature. That artificial, the artificial horizon at the top looks okay, but the one at the bottom looks a little bit strange. Water rudder, so we can control it like that. That's the rudder trim there. And then that's the throttle, the collectives. We can manipulate them separately on the left and right sides. Oh! 
Okay, uh, interesting. Even though we were sort of holding the same speed over time, it's sort of overstressed at 116 knots. Uh, we, uh, yeah, I guess it just sort of accumulated over time. I will uh, take off and land it again, and this time we'll just take off and land at the same location since I think I've checked it out, checked out what I wanted to check out. We'll just check out the landing. That flight was about 20 minutes before it broke. So, not more than 115 knots. And probably don't keep it at 150 knots for very long. So like 94 knots it takes off with the current load. That's the flight envelope for you. 94 knots to 114, let's say. So I'll just do sort of a flight pattern and come back around and try to set it down in the same place. You can see the engine's a little bit out here. So while it's an audacious and interesting design for a seaplane, I don't think it's the most luxurious or enticing of the seaplanes that they have offered us. I, I really need to do a more direct comparison though. We're at about half throttle. Okay, coming in for a landing. All right, let, I'll just see how it looks like from out here. I've got other feedback to tell me how I'm doing as far as the numbers are concerned. Boop, boop, boop. That's 93 knots right there. Trying to be gentle. Okay. Come on. Okay. All right. Oh, I mean, there's no problem flying it, except for watching out for the max speed. Okay, negative, oh, 50. Okay, 50 is right. Negative 50 left, uh, let's try and go right here. Well, I've basically idled the engine. Is there a anchor? Emergency stop switch. Oh, that'd be cheating though. Fuel valves, well. Oh, uh, I didn't want the lights off. Okay, that's all the fuel valves and engine generators. Okay. All the engines have stopped. We just need an anchor somewhere. Bugle. Oh, bugle. Okay, it's literally bugle. All right. That's that's nice. Almost reminds me of submarines, actually. Oh, just in case you want to do the bugle from here. Cargo hatch. Fine, let's open these things. Port bow, passenger door. Inoperative. Strobe lights. Those are the lights those are on. But no anchor. Some kind. Okay, well, let's see what it looks like outside. Oh, we have some doors open. And the hatch up front there. So yeah, there's the Dornier DOX. And I feel like I need to do a seaplane comparison. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.